Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and welcome to Trappist One System. Today, I have some bad news for you, and the news is that, well, it's very likely that none of these seven Earth like planets are actually Earth like, and none of them probably have any atmosphere or will be habitable anytime soon. Now, let me explain this in a little bit more detail. Welcome to What the Bath. <laughs> So as you probably know by now if you watched any of my previous Trappist videos or if you know anything about Trappist 1, this is a red dwarf. A relatively small star, a star that will live trillions of years, much much longer than our sun, but also a star that's a lot more active as you can see from all of the flaring that's going on here. Now. A few uh, days ago, specifically early April of 2017, um, a person or astronomer by the name of Christian Vida, or maybe possibly Vida, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, uh, from the Konkoli Observatory, um, was actually responsible for a very interesting study. He uh, observed this particular star for approximately 80 days, or actually used the observational data of the star that um, was about 80 days long and discovered um, something very interesting. Specifically, he discovered 42 of these flare events that you see occurring in front of you. Now, let's actually go to our own sun and use um, same speed, same time frame here. Uh, this is about 12 hours per second and see how many flares were actually observed happening around our own star. As you can see, there's practically nothing. Now, the flares that you observed are really rare for our own uh, star. As a matter of fact, the largest, most powerful flare known to us historically occurred in 1859 and was actually known as the Carrington event. Um, this event was a very large, powerful eruption um, due to the change in the magnetic field of the sun. And this caused a huge, huge coronal mass ejection so I'm going to try to emulate here using the pulse uh, button. So there is that coronal mass ejection. And um, this particular uh, mass ejection struck um, Earth's magnetosphere and caused auroras as far south as the Caribbean and actually caused some serious trouble for the then invented telegraph. So basically, if it happened now, it would very likely destroy quite a lot of our telecommunication satellites um, and probably burn quite a lot of electronics on our planet Earth as well and would maybe even destroy your smartphone. This coronal mass ejection created so much um, electromagnetic interference on our planet Earth that even some telegraphs um, had like sparks coming out of them. You could even get electrocuted from certain metallic objects, which is something that doesn't happen very often. And this only happened once in the last uh, 200 or so years. Now, when uh, this particular person by the name of Christian Vida, I'm gonna say Vida. I don't know if it's Vida or Vida, I'm gonna say Vida. When he was looking at TRAPPIST-1 system, he witnessed approximately 42 such events within 80 days. And at least one of them was just as powerful as the Carrington event. Now, that is really scary. As a matter of fact, that is so scary that it really leads us to believe that due to those flare events that happen on this star, and also the proximity of all of the planets to the star, it's very, very likely that all of them are barren. At least the uh, side of these planets that's facing the, uh, the actual star. So this side will probably have everything scorched, everything uh, stripped off pretty much any kind of water, any kind of life, and any kind of atmosphere. This doesn't mean that the entire planet is stripped, because there's possibly some uh, water ice or possibly something else stored on the dark side that has never seen the star itself. But this side would be empty. Now, how do we know this? Well, we know that when the Carrington event occurred, um, our own Earth has actually lost so much material that it would probably take it about 30,000 years to recover atmosphere that it uh, lost during such events. Um, and our Earth has a relatively powerful magnetosphere. So let's actually maybe just place Earth here for a second, and uh, we're going to compare it to some of the planets in this solar system as well. Earth is going to go right here in the middle of the habitable zone. So there's Earth. 
And um, we're going to take a look at, at its magnetosphere because this is really what protected um, our planet from being entirely stripped of atmosphere and water um, throughout its history. The magnetosphere on our planet Earth is approximately 0.3 to 0.4 Gauss. Uh, we're just going to use this particular unit of uh, magnetic measurements to, to basically talk about magnetospheres. The most powerful magnetosphere, except for, of course, for our own sun, is on Jupiter. If I place Jupiter somewhere farther away, maybe around here, and also collide it with another Jupiter completely by accident, yeah, that was not supposed to happen. Let's go back here for a second. Let's put another Jupiter for the experimentation reasons. So there's the Jupiter. Let's enable its magnetosphere and you'll see how large it is. Uh, here it is very, very, very large. Now, it's actually um, a little bit over-exaggerated in the game. It's uh, 4.28 Gauss, but it does cover that large area that you saw earlier. Um, so here, it's about 10 times more powerful than it is on our planet Earth. And this is the largest planet in our solar system, so it has a lot of material on the inside. Also, it spins really fast, so it does create a lot of magnetosphere. What this means is that um, if we actually want to hope to have any kind of an atmosphere or, you know, water on, those, on the surface of any of these seven planets, or at least on the side that's facing uh, the star, each of them would have to have a magnetosphere that's about 100 times more powerful than that on Earth. So possibly somewhere along the lines of like 40 Gauss or so. So basically you would have to have this much. Now, there is a very, very unlikely chance that any of them do have such a strong magnetosphere. From what we understand about magnetosphere, um, it depends on several things, but the biggest factors are a large amount of metallic stuff on the inside, which means that it has to have a, either a, a liquid iron core or uh, something that becomes metallic, like in case of Jupiter, it's actually metallic hydrogen. And it also needs to spin relatively fast. Now, even if these planets, even if all of these planets have a very, very large iron core, as a matter of fact, even if they made in, are made entirely of iron, we actually know how fast they spin. They spin this at the same speed as the orbit. All of them are tidally locked. So for this uh, planet right here, which is TRAPPIST-1d, its spin is once per four days. The fastest planet here is TRAPPIST-1b, and it has um, a slightly slower spin than our own Earth at one and a half days. So even if this planet is made entirely out of iron, it would still very unlikely have the required magnetosphere. Very, very unlikely, unless there is something, some kind of a factor that we're not aware of that causes magnetosphere to be stronger. So in other words, none of these seven planets would have required magnetosphere to protect themselves from these tremendously powerful flares that um, TRAPPIST-1 um, has. And so every time these flares occur, as you can see, there's quite a lot of them happening, huge amounts of X-rays and UV light and even uh, white light radiation will actually very likely strip these planets or th their surfaces that are facing the star of and any kind of molecules uh, that are ionizable and specifically here molecules related to hydrogen and oxygen and um, basically would leave nothing on the surface no atmosphere and very likely no water whatsoever but for now this is of course just a speculation based on observations of one person and one team we'll need to confirm these results later on and we're actually are very likely going to be able to confirm these results after 2018 when James Webb telescope launches and is able to actually uh, take a closer look at these atmospheres of these planets using infrared um, radiation. And hopefully within the next two, three years, so hopefully by 2019, we'll be certain of what's actually happening here. So if we're able to detect large atmospheres, then maybe there is some sort of factor protecting these planets from these tremendous flares that you see in the background. Actually, they kind of just stop for some reason. They do come and go as they please. 
But anyway, so here they are again, they just start over. So we know that at least 42 of them occurred in 80 days, so you can imagine there's quite a lot of them happening in the solar system. Um, but other than that, we are now kind of pessimistic about finding anything interesting here. There's probably very unlikely to be any habitable planets. There's probably very few objects here that we can actually colonize, but you never know. Maybe we'll still be able to discover at least one object in TRAPPIST-1 system that is habitable. Although for now, the hope is dead. For now, we're kind of convinced that none of these seven TRAPPIST planets, and we're actually going to remove Earth from here, and we're going to remove Jupiter from here, just so that they don't interfere with uh, this picture, and uh, remove the magnetosphere from TRAPPIST-1G, because none of them would probably have any or at least powerful magnetosphere. Um, so this is what the system looks like, and it's very likely completely barren and has no liquid water and very likely no um, life. So even though this planet has water, chances for it to be so is very, very low right now. And anyway, I'm sorry for the bad news, but hopefully you learned something from this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe and come back tomorrow to learn something else about space sciences or maybe just watch me play some kind of an awesome video game. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games or wants to learn more about space, sciences, and so on. See you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. And... I'm going to just go and explode the system. Because why not? Why not? We have this power. And it's so, so amazing. Let's actually explode some more objects here and see what actually happens to this solar system. And surprisingly, TRAPPIST-1 became... Is this a white dwarf? Yes, this is a white dwarf. Pretty awesome.